I, I will tell you that uh, with the Peter Popoff thing, just how the, um, the exposure came about. Uh, we exposed them, as I said earlier, on the uh, Johnny Carson show. And um, we got the material by a rather clever ruse, I would say. I had Banachek, which is uh, the, the professional name of uh, one of the alpha kids. That, and that's another story altogether. Read my next book. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, uh, he went out there with all kinds of uh, identification around his neck. And he got up close to Peter Popoff while Popoff was working. And uh, he came back to me rather excited. And he said, he's got a hearing aid in his left ear. And I said, Popoff himself? And he said, yeah. So I thought to myself, self, <laughs> a man who heals the deaf. <laughs> He's wearing a hearing aid. I suspect something is, uh, is not quite right here. And indeed, uh, the next night that we went back, I, I, I took a fellow uh, who was, well, I will necessarily name him, but he's a private investigator, and he, he dotes on material like this. He worked for me for free. He thought it was a good cause, and uh, he went in festooned the next day with all kinds of electronic equipment, and he went around testing receptacles in the auditorium. And uh, what he was actually doing was trying to pick up on the radio signal that we we're pretty sure that Popoff was receiving. And he intercepted one, and I've got the original tape of it, where... <laughs> Popoff walks out after a lot of hallelujahs and such, and uh, you hear a voice saying, Hello, PD. This is your wife. Can you hear me? If you can't, you're in deep shit. <laughs> I got the recording. That's the way they talk to one another, you see. Now, what was happening was Mrs. Popoff was touring the audience in the auditorium in advance of the actual show taking place. It wasn't a service, it was a show. A ratty show, but it was a show. And uh, she would go down the aisles and say, Hi, I'm Mrs. Popoff. Uh, is uh, Reverend Popoff going to heal you tonight? I see. Uh, write your name down on here and your address, and we will send you, make sure you put your telephone number in too, and we will send you a free subscription to our magazine. And that way, they would get the information, you see. But what is your ailment? I'll just put that down here so the Reverend Popoff will know when he's writing you to pray to Jesus to heal this disease. That information was all taken backstage, and Mrs. Popoff sat at a transmitter, and Reverend Popoff had the, the business in his ear, of course, and uh, then, hello, Petey, can you hear me? That was his wife, you see. But I'm going to, um, I'm going to tell you some of this stuff that I have at home that Peter Popoff doesn't know about. One of his lawyers does. In case Peter Popoff ever decides to sue me because of what I've written about him and what I'm telling you about him now, I have some rather special excerpts from those recording tapes. She spoke to Peter Popoff as he was going down the aisle yelling, Hallelujah, praise Jesus, the whole thing, and reading from the Bible. Now, he had slips all through the Bible, you see, and he would turn to a spot in the Bible and read some quotation. And the information that he needed was, uh, what, what is the, the disease of this pa person and the other person? And some of the stuff was written inside the book, but most of it was just little slips of paper. So he got down the aisle, and I heard, oh, this is hard to tell you, too. I heard Mrs. Popoff over the, the system saying, She's laughing, and she says, oh, Reeford thinks this is so funny because he knows you, Peter. Now, this is your wife talking, remember? Go to the end of the aisle. It's the big black nigger in the wheelchair, and you keep your hands off those tits. I know you, Peter. I'm watching you. Ha, ha, ha. And she's laughing away. And then, then you see the woman in the wheelchair. She's near death. She's huge. She must weigh 350, 400 pounds. She's, she's in a specially constructed wheelchair with reinforcement in it. A pathetic figure. And Peter Popoff's wife is up in the engineering room there laughing at this woman. Then we saw 
in, in, in the same episode, that was in San Francisco, I remember, the same episode, the same time in the same arena, there was a man with testicular cancer. He looked like he had a shopping bag literally in front of him. It was a dreadful thing to see in a supporting sling in a wheelchair. And he had two doctors with him. And they were laughing so loud they, in the engineering room from which they were broadcasting that they couldn't get the message across to Peter Popoff. What kind of people are these? These are cruel, callous uncaring people in all ways. And the scene I saw at the end of that one, we looked out the back window. It was too dark outside to get video of it, unfortunately. Two huge Samsonite cases full of money and checks were being tossed into the back of a limousine, one after the other, and off went the pop-offs to the local restaurant because they were hungry. And they had masses of cash with them. Well, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, when he came to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, we searched through the garbage afterwards, and we came up with dozens of checks that he hadn't bothered with. They were for 10 or $15. That's a lot of work, friends, to write on a deposit slip. 10, dash, dash, next, 10. Oh, what a bore. He threw away $10 and $15 checks, and in some cases, $25 checks as well, because he couldn't be bothered with them. That's how callous and uncaring these people are. And we found a note in there that had been handed to Peter Popoff down near the end of the service. In Elizabeth Popoff's handwriting, Peter, hurry the hell up, I'm hungry. We've got all that stuff. We've got a box full of it, a box full of, of checks that were never cashed. This is very discouraging, folks. We have to get a system going whereby law enforcement is going to move in on these people. And we can't do a damn thing about it because you can't get politicians interested in coming out against anything that's against God or one of God's ministers. You've got to be very careful of that because people won't vote for you. Is that the kind of mentality that is running our country? Looking at the Republican convention right now and all the mentions of God and his wonders and such, it, it, it's like being at a church service. Not a political rally at all. We've got to get our, our wits together in this country. We've got to get organized. We've got to fight this sort of belief. And this, this preoccupation that people have with something in the sky or under the earth or angels or whatever. I'm sick and tired of it. I, I want to be relieved of the burden of having to take this on my shoulders because the letters I get on email and in the post, they are so pathetic. And I will not send out form letters. I don't answer email with form letters either or form comments, no. Each one is individually answered. I gladly give the time to it. I, I'd rise sometimes at 3 o'clock in the morning and catch up on it on, on the computer. I want personal notes from me that I really mean sincerely to go out to these people when they ask me, what can I do about it? I have met with families in the library at the James Randi Educational Foundation with closed doors where the whole family sits around the table weeping and says that their, their mother or whoever the patriarch of the family is has cashed in all the CDs and has sold the antique furniture and everything to send to some faith healer someplace or another. And they're broke. They owe money, she's taken another mortgage on the house, they can't pay the mortgage, and they're destitute. What can be done about it? I have to tell them, I don't know. You'll have to find yourself a lawyer who might be interested in serving you pro bono. I really don't know what to tell you. I wish I did. This is a desperate situation. The faith ears are only one variety of religious scam, of course. They're the talking to the dead people, of course, like John Edward and such. What did Shakespeare say? Why, I too 
I too can speak to the dead, but when I, when I speak to them, will they answer? I, and it's something that, in fact, I'm sorry, I don't remember my Shakespeare that well. But uh, you'll forgive me, I'm sure. Uh, 